Hi everyone, my name is Amber, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a very exciting video. So as you can see by the title, I let Storygraph choose my TBR, or I'm going to let Storygraph choose my TBR. Storygraph is a website where you can track your reading, a bit like Goodreads, but arguably better, and they're still working on developing it. They actually listen to community feedback and they're doing a lot to improve the website. I think it's now out of beta. It's open for everyone, you can go and use it for free, but you can also pay a premium, which means you get like more book re recommendations or something but for this video I'm going to be using the free version because I don't want to pay for it just yet. One aspect of Storygraph that I really enjoy is that it does recommendations based on your previous reading. Its algorithm chooses books for you that it thinks you may like depending on the kind of mood that your reading tends to be. So for example if you like fast-paced emotional books Storygraph will recommend you a load of those. So I'm going to get on the computer now. I'm going to pick out three, maybe four books to read and I'm going to vlog my experience and hope that these Storygraph recommendations are good. I might do another video like this in the future as well. So do subscribe if you enjoy this one. This is just going to be like my first go at it. I'm gonna see how Storygraph does. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on here. I'm going to click explore and pick what I'm in the mood for. I don't know, I'm probably in the mood for something emotional, perhaps tense? Yeah, let's do tense, mysterious. Formative, that's always good. I think I'm clicking too many now. I've also done challenging and emotional and inspiring. Is this too many? I don't know if I should be more specific, but I don't know. It does say any, so it should show books with any of these things. I definitely want fiction. I'm not bothered if it's slow, medium or fast paced. Genres include any. Uh, pages. Let's go with. Oh, let's go with all of them. I was considering just shorter ones, but I don't know. Let's do reflective as well, in case we get a kind of like Becky Chambers type thing going on. Tick these just in case. And then, I'm going to quickly exclude everything that I'm not interested in, just so that I get the best results possible. I do worry that if I don't exclude these then it will just show me a bunch of cookbooks. I feel like I'm being really picky. There are a lot here that I don't want at the moment, but basically I want fiction. That's what <laughs> I mainly want. Okay, let's click search. I don't know how long this is meant to take. Okay, let's scroll down. Okay, The Vanished Birds, I've not actually heard of. Do You Dream of Terror 2? Let's open that, it, the cover looks good. Do You Dream of Terror 2? I have heard of, I've got that from NetGalley. The Lost Girls I think I've heard of. The Gone Wild, no. Hyperion I have, but probably not going to read that. The Future of Another Timeline I have got on my shelf, so that's good. The Tourist, Comet Seekers, The Man from Primrose Lane, White Space. The Weight of the Stars sounds really good. I don't own it though. Uh, the Deep, Una Out of Order, I do like the sound of that one. Midnight at the, the Electric, I've read something by Joni e. Lynn Anderson before and I loved it, so maybe I could pick this one. I would have to buy it though. A Memory Called Empire, which I'm currently reading actually, The Gas Sentence, I do have, let's open that. The First 15 Lives of Harry August, I've heard of this one, it sounds really good. After the Flood, I also own. Then Alistair Reynolds. Okay, so there are quite a few good options here, some of which I do already own, so that's really good. I'm going to open this as well because it does sound good. It sounds like something I would really enjoy, it's kind of like an alternate uh, parallel universe type thing. Una Out of Order again is a similar thing, I think, she like lives her life out of order. So yeah, I think those are the ones I'm going to have a look at. I'm wondering if I should tick more things, let's tick some more. Just in case it changes my recommendations at all. Okay, these are all the same, but just in a different order, I think. I can't see any new ones. Oh, no, that one's not new. Let's click it anyway. The Unseen World might be new. The Last Passenger. Okay, there's a couple of new ones in here. Okay, so I'm going to quickly have a look at all of the uh, different books on here and I'm going to try to narrow them down to maybe three or four books and I'm going to see which ones I like the look of the most. I want to pick books that I'm pretty sure I'm going to love, otherwise what's the point in doing this challenge? These do all sound really good though, so... 
maybe I could do with part two. Okay, I'm adding this one to my to-read list because it does sound quite good. Again, do you dream of territory? This is one that I already own, and it also says it's the long way to a small every planet meets the hundred, which I love both of those things. Why does this author have three names? Okay, so this one says, if you had the chance, what would you change from your past? So maybe it's like an alternate history sort of thing, parallel universe type stuff. It says it's mind bending, it sounds quite good. Future of another timeline. Again, like I said, I've got this one on my shelf. It's set in 1992 and 2022, so not far off, present day. War breaks out across the timeline, okay. The glass sentence again, already own this. I think this one's about cartologists or cartographers. I don't know what the official name is, but 50% of people say it's slow, 50% of people say it's fast paced, so that's, that's a bit confusing. After the Flood, again, I own it, so I'm leaning towards this one just so I don't have to buy another book for this challenge. And um, this is post-apocalyptic, I think, where the, yeah, the flood waters have obliterated America. Sounds really good to me. It says it's medium paced, mostly character driven. I'm cool with that. Uh, it says it's very adventurous, which I am kind of in the mood for. This one, yeah, I'm going to add that because I know that I'm going to be interested in it. It does say it's slow paced though, which I'm surprised by. I thought this was going to be quite a fast one. Let's see what the warnings are. Okay. Torture. Interesting. Again, this one sounds really good, but I don't own it. I do really want to give it a go though. And then this is one I've not actually heard of. Okay, One Day Meets the Time Traveller's Wife. Magical debut novel about love, loss, hope and heartbreak. Set in Antarctica, okay. And Rasheen grew up in a tiny village in Ireland. Who knows where it's set. Uh, it says it's 100% emotional, so it's gonna make me cry, let's add it. So I have chosen the books that I want to read for this challenge or this experiment. I have chosen three. I was going to go with four, but I think that might be a little bit too much for me. I think three will give me a good idea as to whether Storygraph is a good recommendation site or not. I do think that perhaps when I was choosing these or looking for recommendations, I was a little bit unspecific. So next time I do this, I think I will choose fewer options. But let me just show you the books that I'm going to read for this challenge, and then we'll get into the vlog portion of this video. The first one that I've chosen is The Future of Another Timeline. Like I said, already own this one. This one is a dual timeline sort of thing, and it's also about time travel. So I'm just going to quickly look up to see what Storygraph says about this one, and then I guess I can figure out why they recommend it to me. Okay, so it says here that the mood of The Future of Another Timeline is adventurous which is something that I wanted, dark, which I'm absolutely okay with, tense and challenging, and then the smaller ones are hopeful, emotional, reflective, mysterious, blah blah blah. This is apparently medium paced, which is perfect for me, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. The next one I chose is probably the one that I'm most excited for, and that is After the Flood. This one I know is post-apocalyptic, I don't really know much else about it, I actually won this in a giveaway, I think. I know that it's post-apocalyptic and the US is now underwater for the most part, so I think the main character is living in in a boat. So this one it says is adventurous, dark, hopeful, sad, tense and medium paced. So Storygraph is really on the medium paced sort of vibe for me. It's 88% adventurous, 61% tense, 50% dark and 50% emotional. So again, very similar to the future of another timeline except a bit more emotional apparently. So I'm looking forward to this one. I think it sounds really good and I love post-apocalyptic stuff. And then the third book that I chose for this experiment is Do You Dream of Terror 2? I got this one from NetGalley for free from the publisher ages ago. It came out in 2019, I think, and I still haven't read it. So this one, it says, is adventurous, emotional, and slow paced. So what I know about this one is that it's about a group of people who have been trained to be astronauts and they're going off to Terror 2, which is kind of like Earth 2.0 and they're going to, I guess, terraform it or maybe it's already terraformed and they're just going over to colonize it. I don't really know. So it says that this one is adventurous, emotional, tense, reflective and dark. So again, the dark books, apparently it's quite slow paced. So maybe I won't speed through this one. So I'm going to get into the books now. I think what I'm going to do is start with the future of another timeline, just because it's seems to be the shortest and then I'm going to choose between the other two and I'll get back to you once I begin. Okay excuse my 
my appearance, I am having the worst work day. I don't want to talk about it. So <laughs> I have started reading The Future of Another Timeline. I'm only 20 pages in so far. I can't say I'm entirely gripped at the moment, but that's probably because it started out with the main character being at a 90s rock concert or grunge concert or something. It's not really my kind of setting. <laughs> so I'm going to read some more before I give you any thoughts on this one. And I'm hoping it's gonna be very fast paced and I'm going to be able to read it in just a couple of days. So I'll let you know how it goes. I have about 100 pages left and I am not loving it, uh, but the book did get a lot more interesting once the other character was introduced and then the two of them kind of overlapped a little bit but now again it's dragging and I'm really not loving it so at the moment it's kind of in the three star range I'm going to see how it ends I might bump it up to a four if it ends well but at the moment yeah it's just it's an okay book with one character being more interesting than the other which you know that happens quite often it's actually a couple of days later now if not a week later and i'm not going to lie i've been putting off reading the future of another timeline yeah i wasn't sure i would really be into it i still don't really know what the overarching plot is but i will tell you once i find out and give you a good summary of the book i'm intrigued but definitely not into it and i was considering reading another book instead of this one another one from uh the challenge but i think it's probably sensible that i give this one a go proper go first Okay, so I finished The Future of Another Timeline, the first book for this challenge, and I didn't really like it. I do think that it included everything that Storygraph said it was going to, but it wasn't really to my tastes. So this is about one woman called Tess, who is a time traveller, and she basically focuses on the 19th century. So she's going back from 2022 to 1893, and then there's also another woman, or teenage girl, called Beth and she is currently in 1992, 1993, and her best friend starts murdering people and she doesn't really want to be involved in that. So we it alternates between the two of them and then they somewhat become interlinked. I have to say I found Beth's chapters, the teenage girls, a lot more interesting than I found Tess's. I liked the time travel part of this book. It was very interestingly done. It wasn't really a science thing. Well, it was, but it was more of a natural thing than a human made science thing if that makes sense and I really liked that it was a really interesting take on time travel really enjoyed that part really enjoyed Beth's chapters but Tess's were just a massive letdown and I found myself kind of rushing to get back to Beth's because I found them so much more interesting I think the overall themes of this one were actually quite good as well so in 2022 abortion is legal in the United States and very few people can actually remember another time where it was legal that's a massive theme throughout this book is women's rights and abortion becoming legal again. So yeah, I did enjoy that part. It's just the half of the book, which were Tess's chapters, were just really boring and I didn't really enjoy them. So I'm gonna give this one three stars and then I'm going to start reading another book. I don't know which one I'm going to read yet, but I'm thinking it'll probably be After the Flood because I'm not sure I'm in the mood for another intense sci-fi. So a bit of post-apocalyptic might be good. Okay, so my next book is After the Flood. I think I said that it would be, but I can't remember if I was like positive, but I am positive now. I am currently 69 pages in and I'm really, really enjoying it. So I've read 69 pages in maybe just one sitting and then that sitting hasn't been very long. It's very easy to get into. Sorry if you can hear the rain. I'm uh, sat in my conservatory, just kind of watching the rain come down, which is nice. It's really relaxing actually. So yeah, I'm reading this one currently and I'm very much enjoying it. It's about a woman who is living in a post-apocalyptic United States, except it's not the United States anymore. So most of it is underwater. And her partner sailed off in a boat with her oldest daughter while the main character was still pregnant. And she has since had another baby. She has spent a long time looking for her kid. She doesn't really care about her partner because why would you? So she's looking for her child and then she comes across a raider who tells her that someone who resembles her child may be captured and is about to be sent to a breeding ship. It's very dark so far. There's mentions of breeding ships and raiders and stuff in the first chapter, but I'm very much enjoying it. So she, currently at 69 pages in, I'm sorry, I keep laughing. <laughs> Currently where I am at, she is about to head off towards where she thinks her daughter might be. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it a lot. I'm, it's really fast paced, really dark, and I really like the post-apocalyptic setting. It also keeps talking about how the world used to be and how it is now and making comparisons because obviously the main character kind of grew up when things were a bit more normal, but they still had like the power going out and the floodwaters coming in, but because she lived in Nebraska, she was relatively safe for quite some time. And then the waters came. So yeah, I am loving it so far. I don't know if it's going to be a five-star read just yet, but maybe. 
I also really like the tagline, which is life is about more than just surviving, which is, I'm pretty sure, Clark Griffin's whole thing from The 100. Um, and I'm trying not to think about The 100 right now because it's depressing. <laughs> And I'm still really quite angry about what they did to Bellamy Blake. But anyway, so I'm going to carry on reading this now. I'm just reading before I start work today, which is why I'm still in my pyjamas. So I'm just going to listen to the rain while I read more of After the Flood. So because I know people love maps, this is a map from the book. So obviously this is North America, Central America, South America and Greenland up here. This is the valley where the mum is trying to get to. Here are all the different places that she visits. So as you can see, these white bits are the bits that aren't underwater. The rest of the US is, it's all uh, not sunken, but the water has taken it basically. So you've got like smaller islands up here in Alaska and Canada, and then coming down here, but there's really not much left. It's actually quite fascinating. And I do wonder how accurate this is and whether Obviously, Florida would go first and probably a lot of the East Coast, but I do wonder how these parts of the US would be affected. I can't remember when I last updated you, but I think I told you that I've started Do You Dream of Terror 2. So I've read a chapter so far and I'm very much enjoying it. I can tell that I'm going to really like the writing style. I'm not entirely certain on the plot so far, but I think what it's about is it's a sci-fi book and it's about people who are training to go to Terra 2, which is basically New Earth, Terra Nova, if you will. In the first chapter, a teenager or a boy gets chosen and he has to kind of fight out with his classmates like intellectually. And he's talking about how the UK government has kind of whittled down his classmates it started at something like three four hundred and now it's just down to maybe 50 because not everyone can go on this 23 year journey so i'm very much enjoying it so far don't have very many thoughts yet but i'm looking forward to carrying on with it i think i'm in exactly the same place as i was in my last clip but it's actually three days later just because i haven't really been in a reading mood i've been feeling a bit crappy so i'm reading again now i'm currently only six percent of the way through the book but i'm i am enjoying it i just wanted to give an update and say that the net galley copy is a load of crap and there are sentences missing or like parts of a sentence so i'm thinking i'm gonna have to see if i can get it on kindle like an actual copy um or maybe buy it even and then read it as a physical version or as an actual ebook because i don't know if you can hear quill singing but that's what he's doing because i can't read it if it's missing the end of a sentence it's really quite annoying and even though i can tell like what is kind of inferred or implied i want to know for sure i want to actually read this book especially because i am quite enjoying it i've met the three main characters now and i'm very interested in their journey to terra 2 maybe if they're not going to terra 2 or what terra 2 is going to be like i really enjoy these space exploration stories so yeah i'm enjoying it i'm really pleased with this recommendation so far excuse my computer everything is so noisy today so i finished all three books i realized i was a little bit bad at vlogging at the end there it's just i got really into the other two books that i was reading and i just didn't really want to vlog it i was really engrossed in the books so this is just going to be a very quick recap and then i'm going to tell you whether or not i think storygraph is a good recommendation service the first book that i read was the future of another timeline which is adult science fiction i've already told you the synopsis pretty much but i felt kind of meh about this one i'm probably going to give it two and a half stars the subject matter was definitely something that i would normally enjoy so i can see why storygraph recommended it to me i like the timey-wimey sort of stuff i like alternate universe i like time travel but unfortunately i just didn't really like the writing style it just really wasn't for me one of the characters was just quite boring but i did really appreciate the themes in this one and it was definitely an interesting book for the most part it's just some parts got a little bit boring so i didn't love it next i read after the flood which i did really really enjoy I gave this one four stars. So this one is post-apocalyptic set in the US which is now underwater so the main character is going around on a boat trying to find her missing daughter and this one was so exciting to read. It was absolutely thrilling. I cared so much about the main character and her two daughters and also about the side characters that we met along the way. There were quite a few of those and they were all really interesting to read about but the most interesting part for me was reading about climate change and about how the US became flooded and it spoke about that kind of in flashbacks and it talked about the new ways of life and how humans had to adapt and what also was now extinct like other species yeah i just found it all really really interesting i'm an environmentalist i guess climate change is a huge fear of mine and so it's something that i really like to read about because that's logical really enjoyed this one it's very fast paced and just absolutely really easy to fly through and i read do you dream of terror 2 i finished this one the other day and again this one was really fast paced storygraph didn't say that it was a fast paced read but i did think it went by really quickly not so much because of the action but because of what the characters were going through so this is about a group of teenagers who have been kind of molded to become astronauts from a very young age the uk space agency or uxa it's called in the book i don't know if we actually have a space agency like that but 
I don't know. They got a bunch of teenagers, like the best in the country, to all come together and train. And they whittled these teenagers down, this group of teenagers down into just, I think, six? Six to ten teenagers, I think. Those are the ones going off into space to travel to Terra 2, which is the new Earth that is hopefully going to be much better than our current one as it stands because it's not going through climate change and hopefully these teenagers will grow up and make better choices than humanity did on this Earth. So I really enjoy this idea. Like I said, I'm really into environmentalism, taking care of the planet. So this was kind of a different take on that. It wasn't exactly like climate change and post-apocalypse like after the flood, but it was kind of the take that maybe humans will have a chance to try again after already going well on their way to wrecking this planet. And yeah, that kind of hit home a bit for me and it hit the characters as well. It was very interesting to read. I'm probably going to give it three and a half stars. It wasn't quite in the four star range. It was very enjoyable. It spoke a lot about mental health because these teenagers or adults were going through a lot and obviously going in space for 23 years, leaving everyone behind you is going to take a toll on your mental health. The author definitely didn't shy away from that. I did see a review that said that it was very unrealistic that all of these teenagers would be going through some sort of mental health issue but first of all it's not all of the teenagers secondly they're going off into space and leaving their families behind after being like groomed to become astronauts from a very young age so it's quite possible <laughs> most of them will have some sort of mental health issue but again it's not all of them it's just the majority are going through something so i really enjoyed that and overall i really enjoyed storygraph's recommendations there are a couple of things i would probably change when i do this again because i'm hope hopefully going to make it like a series on this channel hopefully if you guys enjoyed this vlog let me know in the comments but something that I would like to do differently is not tick so many boxes in the beginning because I think the recommendations it gave me while I do think that I chose the right things for me I don't think I gave Storygraph enough information like specific information I think it was kind of all over the place so that's something I would do and I think maybe in my next vlog on this subject I would probably just tick a couple and then read the books that Storygraph recommends me and then tick a couple of different ones in the next vlog if that makes sense so in the next one I might just do adventurous and tense books and then the one after that I might do emotional and hopeful or something like that some kind of combination I think I'd really like to get down into the like the nitty gritty of the Storygraph recommendation algorithm I think that would be really interesting I also want to do this kind of video for book hype and Goodreads as well because Goodreads does recommend and I would be interested to see how or what they think my reading taste is considering I've been on that platform for 12 years now so yeah that's the end of this vlog thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe if you did enjoy it and I'll be back soon with another one bye